It's been a while since we've spoken to a member about their decluttering journey. So today you are in for a treat as we have our lovely member, Laura, on the podcast. We're going to be talking all about decluttering small spaces, sustainability and lots more besides. You're listening to the Declutter Hub podcast, bringing you tried and tested, no-nonsense tips and advice from the leading experts in decluttering and organising your home. Now here's your host, Leslie Spellman. Hello and welcome listeners, I'm Leslie. If you're a brand new listener, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Now, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss each and every episode that comes out on a Friday morning. And now you can watch us on YouTube too. Just go to our YouTube channel, The Declutter Hub, and you can find us there. Now, today I am very, very excited to welcome our lovely member, Laura. Now, it's so nice because Laura has been a member with us since... 2020, I think, Laura. So you're yep. a long-standing member and we've loved having you. So welcome. Hello, I'm pleased to be here. Fame at last. <laughs> I know, fame at last. Laura's <laughs> like, when are you going to ask me to go on the podcast? Like, <laughs> now, the nice thing is, Laura, we've actually met you, haven't we? We met you at the Ideal Home Show in March, I think it was. And then we also yep. met you at the Clean and Tidy Home Show as well a few weeks ago in October. So um, so we feel like we know you quite well and we've met you, which was lovely. Mm-hmm. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so I joined the membership in August 2020. We were in full lockdown then. So I was, I was uh, starting my decluttering journey while we were locked down. I'm in my late 30s. I live in a flat in London. I, I live on my own. So in a small space, but with all my own stuff, if that makes sense, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's so funny because so, I said to I said to Laurie, you need to talk about yourself. And you can well, say, I'm, I'm, like, say. <laughs> and I'm like, and she's like, I don't know what to say. I'm like, well, you know, you can tell us how old you are if you want to. I'm like, how old are you? Are you like late like, 20s or early 30s? She's like late 30s. She's looking good. <laughs> Anybody who's watching on YouTube, she's looking good for late 30s. Oh, see, this, <laughs> this is it's worth being a member just for that alone, because <laughs> about the fourth time you said something like that I'm like oh I know I know it's so nice Laura yeah so you do so you live in it that's the that's the interesting thing about this Laura is that you have a different kind of journey than many of our members who live in sort of standard let's call them houses no you live in a smaller property you live in a flat in in what in southeast london south london all right south london yeah south london so you're a little bit tight on space it's a beautiful flat but it is you're a little bit restricted in terms of what you can keep in your home and that's what we're going to talk a little bit about isn't it uh, decluttering small spaces because you've got that nailed now after a few years in the membership well i think you have anyway so Let's take it back then. Let's take it back to 2019, early 2020. So we're about to embark on lockdown and we all think everything's fine and dandy, don't we? And then all of a sudden we are stuck then in our homes. And I think, Laura, you told us that you found the podcast first. Is that right? Um, Yeah. So it was basically when the first lockdown was announced and we we were all going to be in our homes for a lot and people started talking about things like oh I could use this time for something really productive but I could learn a language or don't know what people were doing um I didn't learn a language so I had clutter for a long time and I it been bothering me for a long time but I just felt like I never had time to sort of do anything significant about it so yeah lockdown hit and I thought well this is actually a really good chance. I'm not going to be able to see anyone. I'll just actually just sit down and and do it. And I was like, but I wasn't very good at declustering. And so I needed some inspiration. So I just kind of did a bit of a search for podcasts, came up, um, found the Declutter Hub, um, started listening to the podcast. So I was kind of just binging them and then found out about the membership through that. And um, and yeah, here I am. (laughs) Here you are, three years later. Yeah. (laughs) Three years later. Hang on, how many years Doing a bit. Um, Yeah, yeah. yeah. So wow. yeah, two, two years, two and a half years later. Yeah. Like, crazy times. So you talk about the fact that you had clutter in your home. Give us an idea then, Laura. What did that clutter look like? So give us a visual representation of how much of a problem it was to you and how you felt about that clutter. So I've I've never liked clutter, but then I'm I've always been really bad at getting rid of things. So it's a bit of a conflict there. I, I like clear surfaces and things, but yeah, I had a lot of stuff. So I found it, it was quite stressful. So I had just there were things that had a place 
and that's fine they were in their place but then I ran out of places and so there was a lot of things like just in piles at the side of the room and on tables and things like that that just shouldn't have been there they either needed a home or they needed to go or and actually one of the things I've learned on this journey is that a lot of my kind of furniture and systems and stuff just weren't actually fit for purpose so in some so I did have clutter I did have too much stuff I needed to get rid of stuff but also there was a lot where it was like actually this isn't too much stuff I just don't have anywhere to put it and so I sort of thought about my furniture as well and systems of making the most space in drawers and all sorts of things like that has also really helped me. Yeah definitely I think that I think the thing is about when you live in a small space you have to make different decisions about your stuff than you do with somebody you know somebody who lives in a studio flat not that yours is a studio flat and somebody who lives in a five bedroom detached house has got the benefit of making a different decision about what Mm -hmm. kind of stuff and the volumes of stuff that they keep so but when you live in a flat and if you want it to be you know clutter free you want those surfaces to be free the kind of things that you're talking about It's just that little bit more difficult, isn't it, Laura? Because you you can't keep everything that you want to, so you have to make harder decisions. It's also Mm -hmm. the same kind of idea as when people start to downsize. In some ways, it's simpler than when you've got a space to breed, if you know what I mean. Sometimes it's like, well, if you want it to be clutter-free, you have to make a decision to let that go or to not buy it in the first place, ideally. So it's just a very, very different decision-making process. And what a lot of people in smaller homes do is they don't get to that realization early and then they become completely overwhelmed. Now you um, have shared lots of pictures of your journey with us in the Declutter Hub forum. So we've seen exactly um, what you've got in your house, the kind of furniture that you've got. We've done lots of deep dives for you as well. So one of the things that we do in the Declutter Hub sometimes if, if people share photos with us, what that means is we can look at their homes and go put this there think about doing this that's not the right furniture think about getting something different put some boxes in and so on so we love doing our deep dives and we've done a couple of those I think for you Laura haven't we and so I think we've got a good feel for what your um, flat looks like and you're right it wasn't completely overwhelmed with stuff but there was just little piles Mm. of stuff around wasn't there yeah um I felt overwhelmed by it I guess so um I think yeah one of the things I learned I think was actually I didn't I wasn't as cluttered as I thought I was I suppose I mean I I was and I absolutely needed to go through things and I had too much for the space that I've got you know given that I live on my own I'm only this is only one person's stuff but then um I don't know if you can see on YouTube that so my flat is um it's converted from a Victorian house and I live in the roof so it means that actually uh, which I bought because I thought oh this is so lovely it adds character and stuff and I really liked it but then I realized now actually it's not very practical because you can't you see my kitchen behind I can't really have cupboards up and so I just have less space because of that yeah I mean you're right Laura as soon as as soon as you've got those kind of eaves spaces or those kind of sloping ceiling Mm -hmm. what that means is you can't have full height furniture you can't have Mm -hmm. wall cupboards exactly you know and so it makes it more difficult so it looks really cute and quaint but then it's like oh yeah but it's quite (laughs) restrictive that's the problem isn't it you know Mm -hmm. but it is it's a beautiful flat and you've just you've got to work around that that's the important thing and it's interesting that you talk about the fact that you know I said that you didn't have a lot of clutter and what you said is but you felt overwhelmed because everyone's got a different level of tolerance of clutter so obviously yeah. somebody like Ingrid and I get a little bit freaked out when things are out of place not really you know that sounds ridiculous but you know we we our, our level of tolerance of clutter is low and some of the people's are a little bit high and you're obviously somewhere in the middle you're even though you've got stuff you're not as tolerant whereas some people are quite happy to live with stuff around them so their tolerance of clutter is high and so it's not you know there's not like some magic formula about what that looks like overwhelm comes in all different shapes and sizes and it depends on who yeah. you are and how you feel about that yeah but also like another thing I think I was beating myself up for I was like oh I've got all this clutter I shouldn't have this I'm like you know somehow failing at life or something but then there was lots of things that I've learned along the way you know like living in a flat like I don't have any real kind of bulk storage areas so I have a garden here it's sort of a shared garden with um, the other flats so it's so I don't really tend to use it much, but like we don't have a shed or a, or a garage or, you know, I park my car in the street. So like even just things that I need for my car, I don't have anywhere to put them. Yeah, I don't have an attic because this I am. This is the attic. So all the kind of stuff that you want to keep from the past that you're just keeping for mementos, like where do I put it? Because I 
don't have anywhere like so my flat's on two floors so I do have a cupboard under the stairs but it's really awkward actually and I've decluttered it a lot but actually it's still a bit difficult to navigate but then that's where all my sort of boxes of things from when I was growing up and and all that kind of stuff is and actually where else would I put it like there isn't anywhere so I was kind of beating myself up for having all this stuff but actually I don't think it was as bad as I thought it was just be, it's just because I didn't have anywhere sort of in a flat to put it if that makes sense I think yeah I think you're right Laura because what, what what people in flats or smaller spaces have to do is you have to use the kinds of storage and the kind of cupboards that the like a wardrobe or a chest of yeah. drawers or a um one of your kitchen cupboards or something like that to keep pots of paint or you know de yeah. it for your yeah. car or whatever and everybody else mm-hmm. has got the benefit of having a little even at least a very little shed or a little porch yeah. or something that they can put those things in but you have to make different decisions and that's what makes it hard so you're still with us you're still working mm-hmm. through your home but you feel fairly in control at the moment so have you got any hints and tips about what you have done then to to utilize these small spaces well you talked a little bit about different types of storage so that was that a solution for you yeah definitely just oh so many little things that have made a really big difference to me so one of the first things I remember learning from the membership was from a Q&A question I put in like right at the beginning when I first joined was um not to use like in my kitchen not to use kind of jars or circle kind of containers use square ones because you maximize the space which just seems so obvious but that just that makes so much difference. Yeah. Um, oh, I love your tip about if you can't have a what do you call it? A, is it Le Mans unit when you pull out yeah. a cupboard yeah. that's in a corner cupboard? And I can't have one of those because um, uh, another awkward thing about uh, the space that I live in is um, my boiler is sort of behind my corner cupboard. So I can't have a Le Mans unit because if I get a boiler service, I have to empty that cupboard and the boiler person has to like crawl through the cupboard (laughs) it's all a bit of a nightmare but anyway but then your tip of having two boxes instead so you've got the box of things so you put all the things in the box at the back and then a second box at the front of the cupboard so you can just pull it out and it's kind of like drawers that was game changer what else yeah just things like um I, I I don't know I had furniture in a space that just wasn't Like you'll probably remember recently, I got rid of my dressing table in my bedroom, which fitted the space, but actually only just it it was quite big and it only had four tiny drawers. So I couldn't put much in it, but it was taking up quite a lot of room. So um, I eventually got rid of that and replaced it with a big sort of chest of drawers. And now I can fit so much in there. Yeah. Game changer. So it's things like that, really. Yeah, I think just just jumping back to a couple of the points that you made there, Laura, to explain about the the Le Mans unit just in case anybody's not 100% sure of what we're talking about here so quite often in kitchen cupboards where you've got like a corner kitchen cupboard what you can get is you can get a kind of contraption that goes into the cupboard and that sort of glides into the cupboard and comes out and so the whole shelf effectively goes it you can pull the whole shelf out into your kitchen yeah and those are brilliant when you've got corner cupboards and in brand new kitchens they're used quite regularly but obviously not all of us can have a brand new kitchen all the time so we have to make do with what we've got and it's so interesting Laura that you talk about the fact that your boiler man's got to you know Um, crawl through your cupboard because we've all got something like that that means it's not straightforward and so You know, we can go on YouTube and look for tips and people go, this is an amazing thing. And you're like, oh, my, my word, that does sound amazing. But I can't do that because mm-hmm. I've got pipes under my sink or yeah. I've got to get the boiler man to crawl through my cupboard or whatever. And so you have to be inventive with your own space. And so that's why decluttering doesn't have a one size fits all. It's absolutely different depending on the space that you're in. But in, what you can do with instead of a Le Mans, if you can't have that is we use collapsible crates or smaller boxes and you put something in the back of the cupboard, the inaccessible bit of the cupboard, and then another box in front of it. And what that means is it's quite easy to pull the whole box out. So quite often people will put, will put things in there that they don't use very often, you know, things for parties or whatever, but it's so much easier to pull those things out if they're in a box rather than if they're all loose. And so that's what you're um, talking about. I think Laura, just to, to clarify yeah that. sorry I didn't yeah. explain that very no, well it's all right much, it's fine. I, I knew explain. exactly what you were talking about <laughs> I'm just trying to explain it a little bit better it's a it's a great thing and I use that all the time whether you got to crawl through the boiler 
open or <laughs> to get to the boiler or not. It's fantastic if you've got a corner, awkward corner cupboard, you know, do containerize to make things simpler to pull out. Yeah, do you know what, with my boiler, every time I need to get something done to it, um, a service or whatever, I have to always feel a bit awkward because if if I book a plumber and it's someone I don't I haven't met before, if they're if they're quite a, a large person, it's not they're not going to fit in the cupboard. So I kind of have to like <laughs> have to like Facebook stalk them first just to make sure they'll definitely fit. Um, I mean, it's um, quite a, it's quite a strange thing that you've got to be able to fit yeah. into the bottom of a cupboard to be able to do your job. I know, and, and then <laughs> I'll I'll get someone around, and first of all, I'm like, oh, I'm on the third floor, and there's no lift. So first of all, they've got to come all the way up the stairs with their tools, and then as soon as they get here and they're like out of breath. I'm like, oh, yeah, now you've got to crawl through there. I've emptied the cupboard, so um, good luck. So they love, they love you. got a torch you. if you want. Um, yeah, exactly, yeah. As if like, it's not oh, bad God. enough that you're on the third floor. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I know, exactly. I'm like, I'm really sorry. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and people will love you. <laughs> But these are the kinds of things that we all have to deal. We have to find yeah. solutions to these kind of thing. And that's what's important. And I think that, you know, you, you talked as well about having um, dressing rooms. You know that I do a little bit of design work and things like that. And if we're in smaller spaces, we're definitely looking for beds that have got an Ottoman base that mm-hmm. you can have storage in. I'm definitely looking for bedside tables that have got two drawers in them and not, you know, the ones look beautiful that are just a table with a shelf underneath. But we really need to go for those two drawers. We need to find storage wherever we can find it and we need to make sure that we've got sofas that haven't got huge arms on them that are a little bit more compact to give ourselves yeah. space so those are all the kinds of things that we need to look at when we're working in small spaces which you've got nailed now but take a little oh. bit of, sorry go on. oh laura's got another oh. she's got another no, just, I, I go just for thought, it. <laughs> sorry i didn't mean to interrupt no, there. Right. i just i thought of another one so with working with them um, covid everyone's working from home more and including me so i had to quickly make myself a space to do that in and it's quite a small space um because i have two bedrooms here so i've got a spare bedroom but it was well it wasn't a room of doom but it was full of stuff and it's also where people stay if they stay over and it's where like uh, there's it, it's a small room that's performing a lot of functions so i was trying to make that my kind of work from home room as well and so i've, I've only got quite a small desk because that's all that will fit um, but one thing I did, I bought a mouse for the computer where you don't have to move it around with your hand. It's got a roller ball that you just move around. So you don't have to move the mouse. Right. So I don't have much space. Like the, that's, <laughs> I, that's, my, a, that's a really good tip. So you don't yeah. have to have like this, the size of a mouse mat. You can just no, keep it in just one. Have just a mouse. Size. Yes. And yeah. I've, got, I've got a client actually who's got a disability and she uses one of those. I think I think they're good for accessibility as well, aren't they? Those roll. Oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah. As well. yeah, no, definitely. So they're good. Well, you've got hints and tips coming out of your face, <laughs> Laura. But for now, we're going to go to a little break and we're going to come back and talk a little bit more to you in a minute. Have you already seen our Advent calendar? It is happening on the clutterhub.com forward slash advent. We have 24 doors that you can open with goodies and free hints and tips and discounts and giveaways. And we are so excited because there are still nine days left, but you can go back to the start of the month. But make sure you do it all before the 24th of December, because then the advent calendar will close. We can't wait for you to join in. So go to declutterhub.com forward slash advent. So welcome back to our podcast with the lovely Laura. She's given us loads of hints and tips so far about how to navigate clutter and organize smaller spaces. So she's already talked about some of the difficulties that she's got with sloping ceilings, with having no bulk storage areas, all of these things are sent to try us, aren't they, Laura? So you said yeah. to, you listen to the podcast a little while, you jump straight into the membership where you've never disappeared from there. You're still here, <laughs> still yeah. here, which we love, of course. <laughs> But there's, you know, decluttering is an ongoing journey and that's why you're still here and there's always um, improvements that we can make. So talk to us a little bit about how you navigated your decluttering journey within the Declutter Hub. So did you do courses? I mean, I I know the answer to this, but tell our lovely listeners. So I signed up to membership in August 2020. You could join for a month or for a year and I thought I'm not going to be able to get everything done in a month. Um, So I decided I'd sign up for a year. That would be my target to get everything done in a year so that's what I did I started listening to the live Q&A's the past recordings um, that are on the membership and also went into the courses 
Um, and I was still listening to the podcast as well. And uh, yeah, so I tended to kind of have them on in the background while I was decluttering and, that, and I used that as motivation for myself. Even if even if you what you were talking about was not what I was working on, I just found it just really useful to just sort of have it in the background. And um, I didn't sort of tend to sort of sit there and watch. I would be doing stuff. Yeah, um, so I think I think it's it's an, it's an interesting point actually, Laura. So because and obviously the people that listen today were all listeners of the <laughs> podcast, of course. And so a lot of people say, well, how is it different? And what you know, do you need to sit and watch? You know, so what would you say is the difference between? So you've talked about the fact that you listen to both of them. So mm-hmm. what would you say is the difference between the podcast and the course? The courses are very, very specific, um, and I love that you really, really drill down into all sorts of detail about all sorts of little things that everybody owns that you don't, you might not sort of think about. But that, you know, just a random example I'm thinking of is like batteries. I organise my batteries, and that's just made my life better because I can just, if I need a battery, I'll just go and get one. And I know it's, I know it's got the right amount of charge in it. I know I've got, I know what I've got. I know where everything is. You know, that Ingrid's infamous about. battery charger. She loves a battery charger, doesn't she? Oh, yeah, yeah, I bought one. She waxes lyrical about a battery charger. <laughs> yeah. No one can no. be in our membership without a battery charger, basically. No, I had to buy one. <laughs> yeah. I didn't have one before. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She convinced you to get one. No, they are great. They are great. Yeah, I love I love the podcast because you cover all sorts of different topics there as well. Um, and you have lots of interesting guests. Don't necessarily mean me there, but you know. <laughs> People nope, you're, up there. you're up there as an interesting guest with the rest of them Laura oh, I don't know well I'm just a just a lonely member but um the people with people with all sorts of expertise and things that really gets me thinking about things I hadn't thought of before and so that's great but then if you're in the membership you get very specific expert knowledge on very specific topics so if you if you know like I still need to do a lot with my paperwork I have done a little bit. It's it's all kind of organised and I know everything is, but there's just too much. I can get rid of a lot of it and I just haven't sort of embarked on that yet. But I know there's a really detailed paperwork course in the membership. I've listened to bits of it and it's really useful. I've learned about some of the things that I can get rid of that I didn't realise I could get rid of. And um, so there's a lot of practical tips as well. And then um, I love that uh, you and Ingrid sort of have slightly different interests as well I think like you're very kind of into sort of the psychology of it all and um helping people with their mindset and that's been really big for me and then um Ingrid um, is very practical and thinking about housekeeping and all that sort of thing which is really important as well and so all of that comes across in the courses and uh, yeah that's been really useful for me yeah I think I think you know for me the difference between the podcast and the courses is just that the podcast are kind of random if if we want to call that so they're quite random so we throw kitchens at you one week and a bit of mindset the next week and so on all really useful information of course but it doesn't take you on a journey really it doesn't take you on that specific go from this place to this place to this place which is what we all struggle with and the whole idea Mm -hmm. of it really is that we go on on a journey where we can actually make sustainable progress rather than flit around from one place to another which is what people typically do on a decluttering journey and why they've struggled in the past and and as you say Laura the nice thing is you can just listen you don't have to watch and so you can listen to those while you work I know loads of our podcast listeners do that and of course a lot of our members do that as well which is really useful so let's talk about you now and how and well-being you talked a little bit about mindset you talked about the fact that I'm the the mindset person and we're both I mean I'm practical too and how yeah oh, I wasn't <laughs> saying you are <laughs> no, it's always a, less is a psychological one and English is the practical one which is true for the most part but I'm yeah, generalizing I'm, but yeah so in, I'm, <laughs> no exactly no you're exactly right but I'm like the emotionally led one so I'm really really interested in how this has affected your well-being obviously it was during lockdown you know you do work on your own and so there was a community element to that as well which was very important to you I know to everybody to all of us in lockdown we all needed that uh, that community didn't we but how has your newly decluttered home had an impact on your well-being um oh massively well in lots of ways really um so I think I just feel a lot more clear-headed because I'm I know where everything is. I know, you know, I wake up in the morning and my bedroom is just nice and clear. And, and and you know, if I'm leaving the house, I'm not trying to trip over things to get to the door. And, and it just makes everything a lot less stressful than it, than it needs to be. 
And, you know, even just getting ready for things like if I'm going away on holiday or even just going out for the day or something, it's just a lot easier and less stressful. So there's that. And then also, um, I think it's, it's, I mean, it's made my life better, really. It's, it's been like, I've been quite interested in um, doing things for personal growth and um, decluttering had actually sort of became part of that for me. I, you know, right at the beginning, I, I, would listen to to you and Ingrid talking about oh you know you just you need to build up your decluttering muscle and you need to um it's that mindset change and then and then things become a lot easier and I and I I was listening to that thinking like yeah I get that obviously you have to do those things but I was like but for me that's not going to happen because I'm not going to build up a decluttering muscle I've never been good at that sort of thing or um never been good at throwing things away and uh but no you were right like as I was kind of doing the courses and listening to all your content I did really grow a decluttering muscle, which I didn't expect. So there's kind of, um, I felt like I'd sort of grown as a person as well, if I can say that. And now I can look at things and think, yeah, that that doesn't serve a purpose. I can get rid of that. Uh, whereas before I'd have felt guilty about all sorts of things. Like I'd have got sentimental about it, which could literally probably have been about almost anything. I'd be worrying about sustainability which I do still worry about but I see things a bit differently now but now I kind of have that mindset change which I didn't expect to happen but it has and um so that's made my life better as well really I think I think you're right I think it's really interesting actually Laura because I think it takes some people a while to even though a lot of people you know invest in a decluttering program or a, a decluttering whatever you want to call it decluttering mindset change or whatever it takes a while for you to get to that point where you can completely embrace it. It's not something where you're just going to go, okay, today I'm going to be a great declutterer and that's what I'm going to do. And I'm just going to allow myself to do everything that these people are telling me. It takes a while because these are habits that have been formed over decades in some in some instances. And it's not that easy to go all in at first. You are going to be, be a little bit reluctant. I think when it comes to decluttering by its nature, you're going to think that Ingrid and I are going to wrestle your precious things away from you. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So there's a, you know, a little bit of resistance in there. So it takes a while to kind of break that down a little bit. And that's why yeah. everybody needs to go at their own pace and on their own journey in their own way. But that that's another good thing about the membership is that if you are worried about a, a professional organiser coming into your home and you're worried of what they're going to say about this or that, or they're going to try and make you do something you don't want to do, whatever, like in the membership, because no one is coming into your home physically it's still if, if you're worried about that you don't well you don't have to worry about that with the membership because you're just it's all you you're the one doing all the work and it's all on your terms you can listen whenever you want you can turn it off whenever you want so I think that's another be benefit of the membership actually yeah definitely I think it is that you can go on your own journey it's definitely for for people who want to to learn it gives you a it gives you a deeper changing mindset for sure than having someone yeah. in your home and I, th I think the interesting thing is as well as within within the membership if people ask questions or if they say this is what I'm doing today then we can guide people down a different path sometimes if we feel that perhaps it's too early for them to be tackling that particular thing or um, there's no wrong way of doing it but if we think there's a better way that perhaps would be easier and more sort of sustainable long term we can guide people down that path if people share that information with us if we can do deep dives and stuff like that mm -hmm. so you still get that one-to-one -one support yeah. don't you that you might oh, get yeah. at your home but it's done in a sort of different way and it's very yeah. reliant on people sharing not mm -hmm. everybody needs to share but it's going to be a different journey yeah. so um you talked a little bit there Laura about sustainability and that's been a thread that's run through your decluttering journey Journey, the fact that sustainability giving things to the right places and donating things to people that really need things has been a big part of your journey so tell us a little bit about how that's helped and sometimes hindered you in your decluttering progress yeah sure well I think it was certainly a bit of a barrier for me at the beginning and because I didn't want to, I didn't want to put things into landfill and I still don't you know that still stands it's it's a difficult thing that you kind of have to work work your way through but I think as long as I, I I guess I don't feel as guilty now about if there's something that absolutely cannot have another home somewhere else it really is like it's had it you know then I can accept now that whatever object that was has had its useful life and that was all it was sort of planned to be for x number of years and it's at the end now and that's 
then where it needs to go. But I think it's important to just remember there's something called the waste hierarchy, which people can Google if they wanted to, but it's basically kind of, because I think there's a lot of misconceptions around um, people think like, oh, you know, I can just recycle it, so it's fine. But actually recycling is quite low, low down on the hierarchy. So I suppose, if, so the worst thing environmentally is kind of throwing things away into landfill um or to be incinerated the next one up is recycling which is it's better don't it's better than landfill obviously but there are still better things above it so above recycling you've got reusing things or giving things away um so you know if it's ch- charity shops or wherever that may be uh, there might be i don't know where you where you, you might give things away to where it's not going to become a problem for someone else so reusing i suppose and then at the top would be kind of just um not using things in the first place or not buying them in the first place yeah so non yeah non yeah buying and, and that's really important as well isn't it as we, i think yeah this I, heavy heavy spending period that we're in at the moment in december yeah yeah um yeah and i think for me it was kind of realizing that okay maybe this is just a one-off thing then that i'll throw things away and then i won't be buying things in anymore so i i shop a lot less now so yeah, I, I guess that's how I've kind of made my peace with it. Um, I don't I don't actually put much into landfill and I always try and find the best home for things. Um, but sometimes it's unavoidable. And it's very much about, it you know, you know, progress, not perfection here, isn't yeah. it? I mean, and the important things are you're not buying things in the first place mm-hmm. and that you are going through that process of thinking about the waste hierarchy yeah. before letting something go into landfill and understanding that. And I think I think I think it is that challenge to yourself as well about sustainability um you know it is I mean we're, we're into sustainability we have a donation directory in the membership where yeah. we're with loads of different unusual donation places as well so that's very yeah. important to us and so I think that that's key and so I know that you're a big oleo fan we talk about oleo oh, quite yeah. a lot so <laughs> you um and it, it's just a really easy way of giving things to people who want them isn't it Laura mm-hmm. You know, I don't know whether I still don't know whether Olio is all over the world or not. Every time we mention Olio, I'm like, is it just in the <laughs> or is it anywhere else? But basically, it's an app, and there will undoubtedly yeah. be an equivalent app in the country that you're in as well. But here, it's called Olio. Just Google Olio equivalent in Australia or Canada or wherever you are, and I'm sure you will find it. And what that means is you post something for free, and somebody says, "I'd really like that," and then they come and pick it up. And Bob's your uncle. It's gone to someone yeah. who really wants it. It's so important to have that feeling that you are giving things to the right places. Yeah, and people are really grateful as well. Um, and I think. Like I use FreeCycle as well, and that's also really good. But I think with Olio, because it's so it's such a well-designed app, for some reason, I think that means you're less likely to get no-shows and time wasters and things. Like People yeah. seem to take it a bit more seriously. Um, and it also seems to be geared more towards kind of small things. So, I mean, you could give away, you know, a, a three-piece suite if you wanted to on there, but it's it tends to be more like, Oh, I've got too many staplers. I'll put a stapler on Olio and exactly, someone will want exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. And you wouldn't want to give that to a charity shop because you'd think that was yeah. a bit daft, you know, because where where is that going to sit in the charity shop, you know, stapler? I'm sure they probably would be able to use it depending on the charity shop. But it's something that can really easily, it, somebody's like, perfect, I was going to buy a stapler tomorrow and now I don't need to. So it's absolutely brilliant from that from that perspective. And so if that's not something that you've heard about, do go and seek out Olio or something equivalent because it really does it takes the barriers away so certain giveaway sites have barriers you know you've got to arrange things haven't you and I don't know you're worried about security and safety and you've got like this star system so they take a lot of the barriers away like you're saying it's a very well designed app the app it's very well thought through yeah. so Laura so you're still with the Decal Hub at the moment I hope you'll be there yeah. forever of course <laughs> um but what's the next step on your decluttering journey um yeah, well, I, I just said I, I sort of signed up for a year in 2020, um, but I kind of brushed over the fact that I'm still here. <laughs> but, um, but, um, but yeah, so I've renewed it. Well, I got to the end of the year and and there was still, I, I actually had done most of what I'd set out for and I, um, and I was really pleased with that. But yeah, there's still a couple of categories that I, well, there were still a few things that I still wanted to do. Um, and also I just really liked it in the membership. So I was like, I, I'll stay another year. And then I just recently renewed again because I was like, I can't leave. That would be ridiculous. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, probably, <laughs> I probably don't need it anymore, um, even though I still have decluttering to do. I mentioned I'm still um, 
uh, need to work on my paperwork, clothes I haven't really done yet. Those are the two main things. Oh, and um, digital, which um, is a bit of a nightmare, to be honest. So that is a project in itself. But yeah, I couldn't, I can't leave that. I know, we don't want um, to leave. Like, oh. and I, I, think, I think the thing is as well, there's new content going in there all the time. So we, 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 we are, you know, we have a full house worth of stuff now, but we are adding things like photographs and all that kind of stuff. There's always new content coming. So, um, so I think there's, there's always a reason to be there, Laura, always a reason to be there. Yeah. <laughs> so is there anything else? I know there's something, I know there's somebody that you wanted to say hello to, Laura, isn't there? Yeah, because my sister, Emma, uh, listens to your podcast every Saturday morning while, while she does her weekly clean. Uh, so I want to say hello to Emma and uh, perhaps I should say hello to George as well, who's my nephew. And then also maybe his sister, Emily, because otherwise she's left out. But George and Emma both came to the clean and tidy um home show. Yeah, so George is so cute. He's so very cute. And yeah. Emma's another fan as well. Now that's yeah. lovely. And so, so this this will be her might be her pre-Christmas clean. This might be her yeah. we've only got a week to go before Christmas. And so it might be her that's pre-Christmas true. clean. So good luck with that, Emma. And thank you so much for listening, Emma. So Laura, <laughs> I think we have come to the end of our podcast. So thank you so much for being here and sharing your journey. There's loads of gems in there, you know, talking about small spaces, the fact that we have to compromise, the fact that we have to look at things in a different way. We've talked about different people's level of tolerance as well. We've talked about sustainability. There's so much good stuff in there. So I want to thank you so much. Thank you so much for being a fantastic. Laura is a fantastic declutter uh. member because she's always super helpful to other people, really gets stuck in with the community, turns up to loads of stuff. So, so, so we love Laura as a member. So thank you so Aww. much for being so supportive of the declutter to hub as well and coming to see us at the ideal home show and the clean and tidy home show it does not go unnoticed we really really enjoy your company yeah laura actually fixed uh when we had a problem with our presentation <laughs> when we were at the ideal home show and laura bought a laptop and fixed it all for us so she's got technical <laughs> skills as well so thank you so much laura for being here and um, i just want to talk about what's coming up next week so next week nearly the end of the year and we are going to be talking through some of our favorite podcasts of 2022 so we're going to try and decide what our favorites are between us so do tune in and listen and i'm sure there'll be loads of gems in there we won't just say oh this one and this one we will talk about some of the content so there's some gems for you to take into the christmas period if you celebrate christmas that is so thank you so much laura no thank you and uh Thank you for your kind words. Oh, uh, you're welcome. <laughs> so thank you all so much for listening and we'll see you all next week. Thanks so much for listening to the Declutter Hub podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to us in your podcast player so you don't miss an episode and we'll see you next week.